so today I'm just going to be showing you how to create a form using the various uh, templates in the Bootstrap site. Um, and I'm going to add it on to the website that I was creating um, in the previous videos, which has the navbar and carousel so far. So if we go to the components section of the Bootstrap site and then go down to forms, you'll have the overview at the top. And if we scroll down, you have your basic email address and password form. And then you also have the checkbox option here with the submit button at the end. So if we look at the code below here, you can see that the form is created by using the form tag. And then you have your div classes within. So the first div class has the form group. And then within that, you have your label which is email address, password, subject message, whichever group that you want to create. And then below the label, you have the input type. So this is an email with the class form control and the unique ID for that particular group. And then you have the small tag below the input, which allows you to have this comment underneath the actual input field itself. So you could put things like email must include the at symbol or, you know, different types of uh, validation checks. Um, or you can just have a small message here just to let people know that their information is private. Then you move on to the password section. Basically the same layout works, uh, except the input type is changed to password. And then you also have your placeholder, which is the text that's within the input field here. So you can change that to insert password here or something like that. And then you have another forum group with the added class form check. And below the input type is a checkbox with the label check me out beside it. In this example, you have drop down options for input fields. So for example, someone could use that for uh, a gym membership, which someone could sign up for a week, a day, a year. Um, there's just tons of different options that you can have. And then you also have the multiple select, which allows the user to, if you hold down control, you can select several items within the list. And then you have the text area where someone could either make a comment, this could be used in blog forums and things like that, where users can create an account and leave comments on blog posts and things like that, or you can have a message area where someone can ask about your business. And the code here shows the form group with the form control select, which creates the drop down option. Um, you also have the select tag here, and then you have your five different options all in a vertical list. The only difference between the first and second select is that the this has a multiple class, uh, whereas that just has a single class. And then the text area below uses the text area tag itself, and you can also change the number of rows that it is just to um, edit the height of the text area that you want the user to see so if you want that area to be larger you can add five rows ten rows depending on the nature of your business and what type of comments you would be getting there's also an option to upload files which is done by changing the input type to file and that allows the user to browse their computer to send in let's say a CV uh, for a job application. A website can use a CV if they're uh, wanting to hire for their business and once the file is uploaded the document can be sent directly to the email that is linked to the admin of the site. You can also change the size of the actual input field. So you have the large select, the default, and then the smaller select. And this is also something you could involve in your responsive design. So if you're viewing it in a screen width above 1200 pixels, then you'll have the large select. Or uh, if you're viewing it on a mobile device, you might want to change it to the small select. Moving on, we have 
range inputs, which is also edited through the range input type. Um, it's basically just a scrollable bar here, which is useful in things like comparison sites for, let's say, um, Property Pal, which allows you to work between a minimum and maximum monthly rent budget. And then you can have read-only inputs, which prevents the user from being able to edit the actual value within that input field. Or you can have it as text, as you can see here in the example below, where the label is static and you have the example email address pasted below as the value here. Then you have check boxes and radio buttons. So as we mentioned before, you have the input class as form check input and then the type is set to checkbox. You can also have the checkbox actually ticked as a default, which you can do by just adding the checked class after the ID, just like it says um, disabled here uh, for the disabled checkbox, which won't allow me to select it. You can see this as an example in the radio buttons area. There is the check declaration within that input field. And the input type is just changed to radio for this example. And then you have the label as well with the text beside the actual button. Moving on. You can align the checkboxes either vertically or inline. And um, this is done by adding the form check inline class to the containing div that the inputs are within and the same also goes for the radio buttons as well. You also don't have to include any labels. The position static class within the input tag prevents any text showing up beside the actual buttons. You can also use the column and row grid layout of Bootstrap to put two input fields in the same row, as you can see in this example here. Um, you have one row div and then you have the first column with the input type text for the first name and then the second column with the text input uh, for the user's last name. So without looking at the code, I can identify what uh, column widths there are here. So the first two, the email and password, are going to have a column width of six each. Because the grid system involves 12 columns as the full width of the page, so the email and password are within the same row, but uh, take up half of the columns each. And then the address will have a new row, with the column width of 12. Same goes for the second address input field. And then the location, uh, city, state and zip. These are all different widths uh, because the city is the same width as the email. I'm going to say that that has a column width of six. Then the state has a column width of four and the zip has, has a column width of two. So let's check the code here. So if we take a look at the code here, you can see the first two groups, the email and password, have an equal width of six. And then there is no column width to find for the address or address two input fields uh, because they're just full width. So you don't really need to identify um, their column width. And then below you can see the column six for the city followed by four for the uh, state and then two for the zip code as I predicted. So now we're just going to start building our own form. I'm going to use this uh, last form that we looked at as an example just because it includes a lot of the elements that we previously looked at such as the just the regular input fields and then the drop down menu and the checkbox as well. So I'm just going to copy and paste below the carousel. Save and see how that looks.
because I haven't put any of the elements within the container, that's why they're spread across the fill width of the screen. So I'm just going to add a container for the form, just to make it look a bit better. Now you can see that the form is contained within an 80% width of the screen. So this outline only happens when the user clicks on the actual input field and that has to do with the focus style. So if I wanted to change that, inspect, go to the element state, click focus and then you can see that the form control focus style has that border color and then the box shadow to give it that uh, faded effect. So I can change that to, let's say black, which is six zeros. So you can see that the border, the hard border is now black and the same would need to be changed in the box shadow as well. So it's just a solid black outline. You can also change the color of the placeholders, the actual labels, the background colors, the font size, the font family, the arrangement of the actual column layout. So for example, I'm gonna go back into notepad well I'm going to have the checkbox as checked as the default and then I'm going to get rid of the second address form group and change the address uh, column width to 8 writing MD in the middle basically means that the column width is set at Eight when the screen size is between the medium breakpoints, which are stated on the Bootstrap website as well. So you'll have different breakpoints for the small, medium and large screen sizes. And if I save this, the address will have an eight column width, but there will be a gap of a four column width beside that input field. So refresh the page. And you can see that that input field has an eight column width. Uh, the reason that there's a, a small gap here is because I don't have a column width of four stated on the same line. So if I go back and create a form group, I'll just copy this. Paste it below. And I'm just going to put a multi-selection input field in. Um, so I'm just going to go back onto the bootstrap site here. So here is the multiple select group. So I'm just going to take this. So I'm just going to paste that in here. And I also need to create a row. For these two elements as well. So I'll save that. Now you can see that the address is fully left aligned with the other input fields and you have the four column width multiple select option. So that's a simple way to make a form. There are tons of different types of forms you can make. Um, contact forms, subscription forms, file upload forms, um, login forms. There are, there are tons of different options, but definitely use the Bootstrap template just to get your basic form and then you can include any fields, any input fields or, or buttons or checkboxes that you want. 
And that's it for today's video. Thanks very much for watching.